Stocks higher heading into the close after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said it will take longer than expected to get inflation down to the central bank's 2% target, meaning it's likely going to take longer to cut rates. Joining us now is George Goncalves, MUFG head of U.S. Macro Strategy. George, it's great to see you. It's been a while since we have chatted. And I'm curious what you made of Powell's comments today, if it's like sort of he's confirming what we already know, or do you think that is indeed notable that he did sort of confirm this view that the market already seems to have come to? Look, well, the market's been kind of dragged here, too. And and, and obviously, great to see you as well and good to be on. This has been a, a market that's been fighting the Fed for so long that it's in this process of kind of giving up. And in many ways, in doing so, is doing the tightening for the Fed. We had a pretty big rise in, in, in long-term rates. It's long-term rates that matter more at this point. The Fed's not going to hike, most likely not going to hike. And so at this point, it's more about can rates normalize? And by doing so, that's like introducing tightening. So I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't think we've learned terribly uh, a lot from today's conversation for, with, with uh, Chair Powell, but it does confirm that they need confidence and they really are, are lacking right there. George, I'm interested to get your take on just when, when you think about the trajectory of inflation over this year, George, what does it look like to you? I mean, look, we um, are in that camp that it is a bumpy move towards lower inflation. Nothing's ever linear in life, and that's including the markets as well as an inflation process. I mean, it's complicated, right? You have demand forces, you have supply forces, sometimes going in, in the same direction or in opposite directions. And and, and we are you know at, the, at that risk of, of like supply constraints adding to inflation, and, and this really creates a big challenge for the Fed and for market participants all, all, all around that, you know, should we look through this temporary inflation? Because you can't use the word transitory because you know what that means. And so like, it, it's a real big challenge to understand where we are in the cycle. I think it's heading lower. It's not going to be a straight line. And then that's, it's going to really frustrate both policymakers and markets alike. Well, and we've had a number of people say to us, the Fed wants to get on with it, right? They want to be able to cut here. Um, the calendar though could provide, could prove a little challenging for the Fed, right? Because you have the June and July meetings. Then you've got a September meeting, which is going to be in the thick of presidential and congressional campaign season. And then you've got a meeting right after the election. So is it if they don't cut in June and July, is would it even be possible to make a move at that September meeting? Um, that's a great point. And, and that's really why uh, my view has been more nuanced, which is does 25 basis points really matter? I mean, like, let's be honest, like 25 bips is not gonna change things that much. And it gives them like a down payment towards their easing, which they wanna do. I mean, they have it in their forecast. They know they're restrictive and they don't wanna create any sort of like un undue harm to the economy down the road. But if you miss the June, July window, and the only reason you would, then you would cut in September is if something progressively gets worse. Right. So that's a kind of the irony here. Like it's almost better to go early and then skip a meeting like September and then wait for the election and then go again if you need be. But if you wait until September, the only reason why they'll, they'll cut in September is because something's gone wrong with the data or in the, in the market somewhere. And switching gears, George, a bit, you know, an, another topic front and center for investors right now is geopolitical risk. We, we don't know what the Israeli response to the Iranian strike, strike over the weekend will be, George. But just as a strategist, walk me through how you're thinking about geopolitical risk right now. Look, it's, it's the tail risk that you have to be mindful of and you need to you know, incorporate that into your thought process as well as, you know, like what sizing of trades and ideas makes sense in this sort of environment. So it, it is playing a crucial role. And I'm sure it's one of the reasons why there's some trepidation amongst traders and investors to not really be fully allocated with whatever view you may have, because you, you just don't know. It can go in either direction. And even if you think you know the, the outcome, the market might respond completely in, in a different direction. So I think you know the, the geopolitical thing is an important aspect for really the three the three channels that I focus on the most, which is like long-term interest rates, which is could, could be linked to oil, what's going on with oil by itself, and then the dollar. I mean, those three things will dictate how I think markets will perform over the next two to three months. And and again, we don't have any clarity or certainty what's coming out of the Middle East, for sure. George, I'm also curious what you make of a view that is gaining a little bit of traction that was once sort of anathema on Wall Street, more common in places like Turkey, oddly, that um, by keeping rates, by keeping policy quote unquote tight, that the Fed has actually kept the economy hot because uh, people have so much 
um, income right now because of those high rates, keeping money in things like money market funds, that they've had more money to spend. W what do you make of that view? So I, you know, that to me is more of a narrative to justify what's happening than an actual reality in the sense that, and this is the big problem which we've always had all throughout. It's, it's a bifurcated economy. Sure, those that have large cash balances, either institutional or you know high net worth, yeah, they're probably building up cash balances. Now the question is, are they consuming that cash balances or just sitting on it, number one? Meanwhile, on the other side of the spectrum, you have 80% of the population who are actually feeling the brunt of higher rates. And so it's a very bifurcated economy that the rates channel is disproportionately impacting lower income versus upper income. So yes is it working is it enough to keep the economy going i don't think so george thanks for joining the show today appreciate your time my pleasure